Like stereo delay, tape delay is another full feature delay plugin, but with something extra. It includes features to simulate the characteristic nonlinearities of tape based delays for a warmer, more analog quality. A little background on that. Tape was one of the earliest methods employed back in the analog era for creating delay and echo effects. Initially, the signal would be split and the copy routed to a second tape machine. Taking advantage of the positioning of the record and playback heads, the delay that results when a signal is recorded and then played back on the fly can, depending on tape speed, create delays that can range from short delay effects like doubling to the familiar slap echo. This is the method employed for the famous Abbey Road ADT, artificial double tracking effect. Manual vary speed of the tape machine used for the delay provided very slight, somewhat random timing variances that gave the doubled signal a more natural human quality. And the normal losses and nonlinearities of tape, the very slight timing irregularities of the motors, which produced a very subtle flutter, and the gentle saturation of the tape itself, which added a little warmth and presence to the delayed signal, lent a little welcome analog character to the overall effect. Later on, more compact tape-based mechanisms were developed to create delays. Devices like the Maestro Echoplex and the Roland Space Echo used tape loops to create their warm, thick delay and reverb effects. Eventually, even more compact devices were designed utilizing circuit components, the so-called bucket brigade delay lines, which used strings of capacitors to create the delays. And of course, once the digital era began, digital delays took over. But the tape delay plugin looks back to that earlier era for its inspiration and provides the means to simulate the sound and character of those classic tape machine delay lines and tape loop effect boxes. So let's see what it has to offer. First off, I guess since most tape delay devices would have been mono, the tape delay plugin is pretty much a mono plugin. There's no mono in stereo out option, but you can instantiate it as a stereo plugin in a stereo track and it'll both preserve the dry stereo signal and create a stereo version of the effect. I guess identical mono delays on both left and right. If you did want to try and get a stereo version of the effect from a mono source on a mono track, you could open a mono to stereo plugin just ahead of the tape delay and then open the stereo instance. Since the source is mono, the effect will be mono, but now you can use the spread knob available only in the stereo instance, and this will widen the image of the delayed signal. Not the same as a true stereo delay, but at least the effect can be spread out nicely. For creating the basic delay, tape delay has the same feedback and delay time controls as stereo delay. The same options for time in milliseconds or note values, including the deviation controls and half speed and double speed buttons. I won't go over them again here, you can look back to the previous video for the details. And once again, you can set the balance between dry and delayed signals, but now instead of left and right mix controls, there are dedicated dry and delay level sliders. The rest of the controls are for generating the specific character and artifacts of tape-based delay devices. So let's take a look. Unlike stereo delay, tape delay does include LFO modulation, so you can create a nice thick chorus effect. There's a smoothing control, which softens the detuning side effect of the delay time modulation, allowing for higher LFO intensities without unpleasant pitchiness. but the inclusion of the LFO is not just so you can do chorusing effects. It can also be used to simulate one of the speed irregularities of a typical tape machine. I'll explain. Those of us who've been around long enough to have worked with tape remember all the medium's flaws, including the dreaded wow and flutter, especially bad with smaller formats like cassettes. Flutter was small random speed bumps caused by the tape sticking. Wow was the slower pitch variation caused by motors that couldn't hold their speed consistently. Both caused slight pitch and amplitude modulation that, for better or worse, contributed to the specific character of tape. 
Tape delays LFO can be employed to simulate the wow of older tape machines. A slow rate and subtle intensity value, combined with the smoothing control to keep the pitchiness from being too strong, can be dialed up to add an almost subliminal pitch variation, which will help in creating the illusion of a tape-based delay device, with all the quirks and subtle flaws that give it character. I'll isolate just the delayed signal and demo it with both a steady tone and a regular audio signal, cranked up more than you'd normally want, so you can clearly hear the effect. The other modulation common to tape transports, flutter, can be simulated with the two dedicated flutter controls to the right of the LFO knobs. Once again, you can set the rate and intensity of the simulated flutter, but this is a more specific emulation of a particular artifact. As tape would wind off the reel, it would stick slightly and then come loose, causing very subtle random slowdowns and speedups. And that's exactly what this flutter feature does. Again, I'll isolate the delayed signal and demo it with both a steady tone and a regular audio signal. Again, cranked up more than normal, so you can hear exactly what it does. Of course, if you want to simulate these subliminal tape artifacts for a more realistic tape delay emulation, you'll need to keep them at very low intensities. The effect should be almost subliminal. You should barely be able to perceive their contribution when A being the delayed and bypassed signals. But if used carefully, they can add that extra little bit of character that gives tape delay its potentially pleasing analog quality. The other aspect of analog tape that people have always found so pleasing is tape saturation, the gentle clipping of the recorded wave that adds its very subtle, distinctive distortion and compression. Naturally, tape delay includes this as well in the section labeled character. The clip threshold knob, calibrated in dB, lets you reduce the level where the simulated tape saturation kicks in, so lowering it will increase the effect. As you can hear, it can add quite a bit of crunch, but once again, you'd normally want to add just a small amount of extra warmth and presence to the delay signal. The low and high cut filters are part of this, reducing the bandwidth, which both softens the tape saturation effect and emulates the bandwidth limitations of many tape delay circuits. Finally, there's a tape head mode switch. The normal position is clean, but you can also choose diffuse, which offers a subtle variation of the tape emulation artifacts. I've always said that if Logic ever reskinned tape delay like they did with Compressor, people would be all over it for its rich analog vibe, but even hiding its special character behind the classic Logic blue panel, this plugin is one of Logic's most capable and characterful effects. Next up, Logic's kitchen sink delay effect, Delay Designer. <laughs> 